Tonight on WTOP 10 Nightly News, a mobile food pantry is opening its doors to people in need this November. And SUNY Oswego Dining wants to know how they're doing. Plus, with the dawn of the holiday season, Oswego prepares for celebrations. WTOP 10 Nightly News starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Matthew Bly. And I'm Madeline Cummings. Today marked the first day of the week-long celebration of graduate studies at SUNY Oswego. The Dean of Students Office joined in on today's celebration by taking part in the ice cream social this afternoon. Tuesday's events will kick off with a virtual interactive session on personal and professional growth. You can also catch up and get pizza with the Dean of Graduate Students at SUNY Oswego's Syracuse campus. If you're more of a coffee person, you can meet the Dean on Thursday and be part of the Graduity pro Project. To finish this week off, there is a free veteran luncheon at Sheldon Hall and a graduate community social at Pressbox on Friday. This Thursday, Penfield Library is hosting a faculty research sharing event. The event will have faculty members Yang Gang Wang and Marthinius Cohen. Wang works in the Department of Atmospheric and Geological Sciences and Cohen is in the Criminal Justice Department. The event will be held in Penfield 215 at 3 p.m. and all members of the campus are encouraged to attend. Winter is almost here and Students Helping Oz Peers is hosting a winter clothing drive along with the Department of Communication Studies. The drive will be held November 6th to the 10th and everyone is invited to donate winter clothing to protect others. Some things to donate are winter jackets, thermal clothing, and winter accessories like hats, boots, and gloves. Oswego County Health Department, in collaboration with the Food Bank of Central New York, are hosting multiple food pantries in November across Oswego County. The mobile food pantry is open to anyone in need of food. There are no income requirements, but supplies are limited to one box of food per household. They are scheduled to provide food from 3 to 6 p.m. on November 7th, 10th, and 21st. For more information, you can call the Food Bank of Central New York at the given number. Do you like the food on campus? Oswego Dining Services wants to know. And that's why they are offering the campus a chance to share their opinions to help them improve their services. If you want to participate in the survey, you can complete an online customer satisfaction survey at nacufssurvey.com. Those participating in the survey can also win Laker Dining Dollars or $250 in textbook money. It's certainly good to know how you're all shaping up. Who says it's too early to go Christmas shopping? Certainly not us. The Oswego <laughs> County Youth Bureau is collaborating with the Oswego Kiwanis Club to host a Christmas craft show. The show will take place on Sunday, November 26th at the Oswego Elk Lodge. The event will have 50 participating vendors along with food and raffle tickets that you can buy. All table and raffle proceeds will go towards funding youth activities. The Oswego City County Youth Bureau is teaming up with Tut's Hair Salon, PJC Contracting, and Malone's Irish Hideaway to host the Kids Christmas Dance on Saturday, December 16th. The event will take place at the Oswego Elks Lodge from 3 to 6 p.m. The event will also include crafts, food, sweet treats, goodie bags, raffles, and Santa Claus. This is a free event open to the first 100 kids who register. The registration opens via email on November 10th. With all the holiday celebrations in line, let's see if the weather allows for any fun this week. Our Storm Team 10 meteorologist Caitlin Farrell is outside of the Murano Campus Center. Caitlin, can you give us a quick look at the forecast? Good evening, guys. I am currently outside the Marino Campus Center where the wind is really whipping around and the rain is slowly starting to fall. This is what it's going to be looking like for the rest of the week, so let's get right into it. So. Next chance for snow and rain. When are we going to be seeing this coldness come again? Last few days of warmth, and I'm going to be guessing it's probably going to be the last ones for the year. How warm are we going to be getting, and what days are we going to be looking for the warmth? Hats, gloves, jackets, oh my. How many layers are we going to be needing these next upcoming days after the temperatures have dropped? And what's the rest of the week going to be look like? What's new? What's going to be happening? I'll be covering all this back inside. Back to you guys. Okay, thank you, Caitlin. Still ahead tonight, looking to get your flu shot and COVID boosters? Details to come about the upcoming clinics for the public. Plus, with infant mortality rates rising for the first time in decades, how is New York combating this issue? More when we return after the break.
I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. <laughs> yes, Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining me here at WTOP. My name is Caitlin Farrow, and I'm your meteorologist. So, as we saw outside, 48 degrees out, slight chance of rain that we did see happening, lots and lots of wind. Five miles per hour from southeast, feels like 45. That wind definitely brings that air temperature down. Dew point 37, dew point and the temperature are relatively close, which is why we saw some rain. Air pressure is a bit higher than normal. So, as we look into the chance of inside out umbrellas, we're about a 70% chance winds we're going to see up to 16 to 26 miles an hour here in the next day, gusts up to 25, even up to 40 miles per hour, which is kind of insane. So looking at the sleep cast, we are definitely seeing a very nice sleep cast for us tonight. We're going to be see, see, sitting about in the mid 50s, heat off, light blankets, no need to worry about AC or heat. Definitely smiles all across the board until about six in the morning. So looking ahead at, across the United States, we have this weird low pressure system that kind of reaches all the way up into the north into the mid part of the country, slides down to about a stationary front with a high pressure system heading down with low and with a cold front heading throughout the rest of the country, seeing it stretch all the way up into some of our Great Lakes into Canada with some low pressure systems down there. We have a cold front stretching all the way up into Canada coming down with two warm fronts, which we will be seeing affecting us this week starting tomorrow. So speaking of tomorrow, let's look at our off to school cast. Right now, well, tomorrow morning is gonna be 35 degrees windy. Definitely be, a on, definitely be aware of ice on the roads as we see the rain come in, turning into ice, and then heading home. Still gonna be cloudy, very windy, 46 degrees. Rain continues. So it is that time of the season once again for your snow forecasts. What to do driving for us, for our commuters. Check your, check your tire pressures, remove ice and snow and avoid skidding. Make sure your guys' gas is also nowhere near empty. As we look into our seven day forecast, Tuesday, 55 degrees with, a, uh, with some PM snow and rain. Wednesday, we drop to 39, low of 32. Definitely be aware for ice. And we start to see we head up and then stay consistent throughout the rest of the week. That is your forecast. Back to you guys. Once again, thank you, Caitlin. Today, the Oswego County Health Department hosted a vaccination clinic for the newest rounds of flu and COVID-19 vaccines. 
Officials say it is important to stay updated with vaccinations as the viruses continue to change over time. Tomorrow, there will be an immunization clinic by appointment only from 12.30 to 3 p.m. To find out the latest local news about COVID-19 vaccines, visit the OCHD's website at health.oswegocounty.com. New York is taking action against maternal and infant mortality rates that have risen for the first time in decades. Governor Kathy Hochul has announced new efforts, creating and maintaining a statewide database of doulas and including their services in Medicaid coverage started starting January 2024. New York State Health Department of Health Commissioner Dr. James McDonald says doula services can improve birth outcomes and provide families with emotional support during a time that can be challenging. Former President Donald Trump took the witness stand in his $250 million civil fraud trial in New York City today. His testimony quickly became a sparring match with the judge and condemnation of the legal process in general, according to reporters in the courtroom. Laura Aguirre brings us more on the contentious proceedings. I'm Laura Aguirre for WSBT 22 News. I'm Laura Aguirre for Fox Carolina News. I'm Laura Aguirre for WECT News. I'm Laura Aguirre for WMUR News 9. The case also has real consequences for the Trump Organization's ability to stay in business in New York, with Attorney General Letita James seeking to bar Mr. Trump from making future deals in the state and to dissolve his companies. There is no jury in this trial. The judge alone will eventually render a verdict. 500 Jewish New Yorkers gathered at the Statue of Liberty for a sit-in Monday afternoon, calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. The demonstration was held by members of the Jewish Voice for Peace organization and their allies, including artist Nan Golden, writer and actress Tavi Gevinson, and RuPaul Drag Race winner Sasha Velour. The group held banners that read, Seize Fire Now and Let Gaza Live, along with signs promoting peace and freedom. The gathering was deemed the largest act of civil disobedience in Liberty Island's history. New polling from the New York Times and Siena College shows President Biden falling behind former President Trump in some key swing states. The president is trailing Trump in five of the six battleground states that helped him win the election in 2020. Biden is behind in Nevada, Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, and only ahead in Wisconsin. The poll found roughly 6% of voters across the battleground states would switch from Trump to Biden if Trump was convicted. This would be a large enough swing to ensure Biden's re-election. An Ivy League professor makes a record-setting journey across the country and documents the whole thing on social media. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. We've got runs, we've got hugs, we've got runs and hugs. Take a look at this. A Harvard physics professor just finished going the distance running all the way from San Francisco to New York City. Professor and marathon runner Jennifer Hoffman started the nearly 3,000 mile intrepid trek on September 16th with a plan to average 60 miles a day in an attempt to chase after and beat the world record for the fastest transcontinental run by a woman. Hoffman's trek took her along scenic highways and byways, and she documented the journey on her Facebook page called Run Jenny Run, presumably a nod to Forrest Gump's own Jenny-fueled cross-country gallop. On November 3rd, Hoffman finished the journey in New York City in under 48 days. If confirmed, she will have beaten the standing world record by more than a week. A run and a hug headlined a West Virginia football game when a returning Navy sailor surprised his little sister. Petty Officer Second Class Nicholas Hill spent the last year and a half stationed off the coast of Japan, but thanks to a coordinated effort by school officials, he was able to surprise his little sister Lily, turning this away game into a literal homecoming. Sometimes you just need a hug. A Florida Sheriff's deputy learned this when he responded to a 911 call that turned out to be a false alarm, but a very sweet one. You called the police? You called him to give him a hug. The department said they appreciate the support and are using the viral moment to teach kids about the use of 911. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. When WTOP 10 Nightly News continues, increasing number of children in foster care states with strict abortion laws. And learn the potential signs that someone is having a seizure.
What? What's what's going on? Yeah, it's, dude, we're, this, we're going at like 11.30. It's like... No! What, what do you mean no? It's 10.30. 10.30? Yeah, it's 10.30. What do you mean it's 10.30? Hey, don't touch that. That's my ladder. Hey, man. Whoa. You know this book was already discounted 10%? Wow. Wow. Let's get a closer for that one. Matthew, Matthew, news. Look at that. Can we go back inside? I, I want to sleep in the studio again. We'll deep dive into our feelings and our real talk about you. Stay tuned because it's about to get real. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Welcome back to Major Discussions. Consumer news, we are calling attention to all parents. Multiple food companies have recalled their applesauce pouches due to potential lead contamination. Schnucks, Weiss, and Wanabana apple cinnamon pouches are currently recalled after the FDA found elevated levels of lead during tests. As of Friday, the FDA reported seven cases of adverse effects in five separate states. Experts recommend discarding any of these recalled applesauce pouches and encourage parents to test their children for lead if they know they have ingested any amount of these foods. A new study shows that states with restrictive abortion laws place more kids into foster care. Researchers have found an 11% increase in the number of children put into foster care in states with certain abortion restrictions compared to states without them. Anti-abortion politicians argue that these laws will protect mothers and their children. However, studies and courts contest the argument, stating the foster system continues to be overwhelmed. It's National Epilepsy Awareness Month, and according to the CDC, there are around 3.4 million Americans living with this brain condition. Mandy Gaither has more about the signs of a seizure. It's one of the most common neurological diseases. Epilepsy causes seizures, and the most well-known sign is convulsions. Where patients become stiff, they shake all over, they can bite their tongue, uh, they can pee on themselves or defecate on themselves. Neurologist Dipali Namade with Orlando Health says there are also lesser known subtle signs of which to be aware. A person could be having a seizure if they're staring into space, making a lip smacking movement or a gesture like they're picking at their clothes. Unnatural laughter can also be a potential sign as well as numbness or tingling, blinking rapidly and crying out or screaming. The seizure symptoms or the signs depends on which part of the brain your seizures are originating on. So they could vary uh, from person to person. If someone is experiencing a seizure, Nomade says to gently lay the patient on their side in a safe place away from sharp or heavy objects that could hurt them and loosen clothing around the neck like a tie or scarf. Do not put anything inside their mouth, especially spoon or your fingers. Patients are never going to swallow their tongue. It is physically impossible to swallow the tongue. Since seizures can last seconds or minutes, Namade says to time them and to call 911 if they continue for more than five minutes, if the person is hurt or pregnant, or if there's another medical condition happening at the same time, like a heart attack. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. The CDC says epilepsy can be caused by different medical conditions that affect someone's brain, like a stroke, brain tumor, and a traumatic head-on brain injury. The federal government says stop adding rhinestones to the center of your car's steering wheel. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration announced Monday people should immediately remove any aftermarket decorations on their steering wheel. 
The items can dislodge in the event of a crash and cause serious injuries, even causing one driver to lose sight in one eye. And coming up in sports is our Owen Miles. Owen, can you give us a quick preview? Of course, guys. The season has come to a close in the NASCAR Racing Series. I'll be highlighting that and more after a quick break. It will be your last chance to see one occur for two decades, as the next time one will be visible over the continental U.S. He's like 84. Yarrow told police in the hospital that he had pressed the doorbell and bleed. They mix with oxygen and nitrogen. They come briefly. What's what's going on? Yeah, it's, dude, this we go on at like 11:30. It's like no. What do you mean no? It's 10:30. 10:30. Matt, it's 10:30. Who is 10:30? Hey. Don't touch that. That's my ladder. Hey, man. Whoa. You know this book was already discounted 10%? Wow. Wow. Let's get a closer for that one. Matthew, Matthew can you look at that. Can we go back inside? I, I want to sleep in the studio again. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Owen Miles, bringing you your sports report for this evening. We start on the ice, where the women's ice hockey team fell to the SUNY Plattsburgh this Friday. Oswego looked to be on the right track early after Mac Hull scored in a, just a minute into the first period. Plattsburgh would tie up the game at one later in the period. The Lakers put up great defense, but ultimately fell after two goals late in the third period by Plattsburgh. Final score of this one, 3-1 Plattsburgh win. The Lakers will look to make a comeback this Friday versus Morrisville State. The Oswego wrestling team opened up their season this weekend at Ithaca, where they finished fifth out of the 12 schools that participated. Junior Anthony Kaskin was the highest finisher of the Lakers this weekend, finishing second in the 197 weight class. Charlie Grigas finished third in the 174 weight class by decision after he won his final matchup. The Lakers managed to accumulate 88 total points on the weekend in Ithaca, and they will head to Brockport next for the SUNY Brockport Quad Meet, where they will face three other schools on November 11th. NASCAR had their championship races this weekend at Phoenix Raceway. On Friday night, Ben Rhodes won his second Craftsman Truck Series championship. He has now won in two of the last three years. On Saturday, Cole Custer won the NASCAR Xfinity Series Championship, in his, and it is his first championship in his 11-year-long NASCAR career. Ryan Blaney won the NASCAR Cup Series Championship on Sunday, and car owner Roger Penske is the first owner to win back-to-back -back championships since Rick Hendrick with Jimmy Johnson from 2009 to 2010. Moving to the NFL, the Las Vegas Raiders made a statement yesterday as they took down the New York Giants 30-6. This game featured two rookie quarterbacks, with the Raiders starting Aiden O'Connell and the Giants bringing in Tommy DeVito early in the first quarter. The Raiders took the lead early and pulled away with it, with Josh Jacobs having 98 rushing yards with two rushing touchdowns. This win was exactly what Vegas wanted after they fired their head coach and general manager earlier on in the week. We now head to Cincinnati this week where the Bills took on the Cincinnati Bengals. 
This was a bit of a sentimental win as the as this was the first game that DeMar Hamlin was back in Cincinnati after his incident last week. Here's Joe Burrow, shotgun snap. Tosses it to the back and that is caught by Smith for the touchdown. The, the Bengals will go up seven to nothing on this play. And there's Joe Burrow, he looks really happy. Now we have the Bills, Josh Allen tries to find someone open, cannot find anyone and rushes in for the touchdown on his own. 7-7, Buffalo. Here's Cincinnati again looking for it. Gives it to Joe Mixon, and he just rushes right down the middle. Another touchdown for the Bengals. They go up 14-7 after this one, and there's Mixon jumping into the stands, just like the old Lambeau leap. Now here's the Bills again coming in. This is snapped by Allen. It's going to be picked off by Cam Taylor Britt, intended for Gabriel Davis. And that is definitely not what the Bills wanted, as now the, as now the Bengals are going to have great field position. Didn't score anything from that, but here goes Burrow, giving it to Drew Sample. He's going to come in, and he is going to jump into the end zone for the touchdown. <laughs> we now have Jesse Kushner here in the studio to make a story on rugby. Jesse, take it away. Hello. The Oswego Wizards rugby team played Marist College in Poughkeepsie last week. Overlooking the Hudson River, our boys wearing green and gold put everything they got into this game, but unfortunately, they did not come out with the victory. Spirits remained high, however, following the game into their next game against Fairfield University. I got a chance to talk with number 15, Aiden Coupet. He had this to say about the team's re recent loss. We left, all, we left our hearts out on that field. And an awe-inspiring message indeed. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. I guess I have really been looking for love in this dating app. Yep, I'm definitely gonna call right home. feelings in our real talk segment. Stay tuned because it's about to get real. What's what's going on? Yeah, it's dude, this we go on at like 11:30. It's like No. What do you mean no? It's 10:30. 10:30. Matt, it's 10:30. Who is 10:30? Hey, don't touch that. That's my ladder. Hey, man. Whoa. Did you know this book was already discounted 10%? Wow. Wow. Get a closer for that one. Matt, look at that. Look at that. Can we go back inside? I, I want to sleep in the studio again. Well, with Halloween over and Thanksgiving fast approaching, that means Christmas is just around the corner. And believe it or not, Rockefeller Center has already picked their famous Christmas tree. This year's giant tree is from Bestville, New York, weighing 12 tons and standing 80 feet tall and 43 feet wide. The Rockefeller Center Christmas trees are Norway spruces due to their grand size and known sturdiness. This this Oh, go ahead. <laughs> this year's tree will be wrapped in five miles of wire and over 50,000 lights. The tree's topper will be a star with three million Swarovski crystals and weighs nearly 900 pounds. Well, I'd love to talk about that, but that's all the time that we have for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for Perspective Entertainment. Thank you for watching. Have a great night, everyone. <laughs>